Hello, everyone. My name is Federico Maggi, and I'm here today with uh, Jonathan Anderson and Marco Balduzzi with Drone Micro Research. And the reason why we're here is because now we're ready to share the tool set that we've been using for the past three years to build automated wireless capture the flag competitions. Jonathan, the floor is yours. Thanks, Fede. So what we're going to be talking about today is the infrastructure uh, behind the Capture the Signal contest, which we created. Um, and this uh, contest is at its base, a blind signal analysis challenge. Um, and you know, some of the hardest things about reversing radio signals are almost everything about it, right? Um, whether you're talking about um, how to imagine a signal in the frequency domain and then to envision what that same signal might look like in the time domain, or whether you're talking about um, advanced uh, kinds of encoding uh, techniques for signals. Um, all of this adds up to quite a steep uh, learning curve, and we wanted to find a way to you know, share the knowledge that we've gained through our prior research with the community. Um, you know, and lots of our activities and research, whether it was reversing drone protocols or reversing crane protocols, involves basically, you know, recording signals um, off the radio with almost no prior context, and then trying to figure out the content of those signals. You know, we had also some experience, um, you know, bootstrapping mobile pwn to own. And, you know, in the beginning, it was pretty challenging. We would bring, um, you know, a pile of cash prize money and a RF isolation enclosure, but, you know, we didn't have any contestants at the beginning. Um, and now it's kind of grown into something large. So we kind of had the idea of maybe bringing the uh, contest related to blind signal analysis. So we talked about these ideas with Dragos and the PACSEC and uh, CANSEC community. And Dragos was you know, kind enough to let us host um, a contest or, or at least give us the opportunity to do so. And so as we kind of developed these ideas, we thought about you know, maybe having a dynamic kind of contest um, where people could transmit and receive radio signals. Um, and you know, really the, the key goal though was again, to educate the community. So, you know, we thought, how do we make this fun, right? Um, because it can be kind of a very intellectual or very challenging, um, you know, activity. So we, we definitely knew we wanted to allow people to make uh, dynamic and static uh, solutions to challenges. Um, you know, dynamic solutions, like the kinds you create in GNU Radio can be very challenging. And so we also wanted to include the ability to use kind of all-in-one tools um, like Universal Radio Hacker, GQRX, and many, many other tools. Just because I didn't mention it doesn't mean it's not a useful tool. These are just some simple examples. Um, but also, as you get into more um, complex or advanced um, radio signals or radio challenges, you know, dynamic GNU uh, radio flow graphs are also an interesting you know, avenue, right? So, you know, we talked about including both uh, transmission and reception as part of the contest. And today, the way the contest works, it's more um, a transmission by a server and then the, the contestant solves it on the receiving side. But that doesn't mean the contest can evolve into transmitting and receiving radio signals in the future. And we definitely knew we wanted to allow beginners as well as more advanced contestants. So we thought about some of the challenges. How do you deploy a contest like this? Um, we definitely didn't want to deal with all the various international regulations and rules and restrictions. You know, you can always have on-site, um, you know, reception issues uh, due to unintentional radio interference or even intentional jamming. And we were just trying to see how we could make something that would work well and avoid these kind of things. And then even contestants who are new, as we we talked about we wanted to include them and many might not even own SDRs. So we thought about how this could work, right? We visualized a virtualized framework. Um, we, we know it needed to be simple and lightweight. Um, if you're gonna deploy this to contestants or have people set this up at contests, it needs to be easily understandable by them and easily installable. We knew that we might have you know, multiple uh, contestants um, and then if we were going to do it globally, these contestants, contestants might be far away. So 
We know we needed to be able to support lots of signals. We knew that it needed to be bandwidth customizable. If, if you've had any experience with radio IQ data, you know it can um, become very large, but to be able to support this kind of virtualized um, system, we need to be able to customize this. We definitely wanted it to work transparently with GNU Radio, so someone could just plug in the contest uh, signal directly into their flow graph and then begin building their flow graph without being encumbered by a lot of special um, things to know. And as well, we wanted to support external tools and allow people to use those uh, seamlessly as well. So what we came up with is we just call it RF over IP. It's just kind of a generic name for what we accomplished. And here you can see on the left side, we have you know, a streaming signal that's you know, maybe generated by GNU radio. And then that is combined with um, important metadata about the signal. And then that data stream is then you know, sent over a zero M, a message queue port, ZMQ, um, and then received by the contestant on the other side where the signal is <coughs> separated from its metadata. And then further, it's directed into a FIFO um, for use with external tools. And we'll talk about the, you know, more details of this next. So, you know, first we envisioned like a frequency space, you know, as you have in the real world, you have open air, people can transmit on whatever frequency they want. So how do you virtualize this, right? So we took the an entire you know range of frequencies and we divided them into you know equally sized uh, sections, um, and then you know each section would be assigned to a specific port on the network, um, and then we used zero MQ as I mentioned with the TCP pub sub model as the underlying transport to deliver this data. So then tuning is simply accomplished by you know a simple formula where you um, take the base port and then figure out what frequency you're tuning to and it becomes very straightforward as there's no real special um, tuning mechanism built into the protocol itself it's just a matter of port selection and then we also use a simple uh, channel model to simulate real world environment that way you don't get just dry algorithmically generated signals and this can uh, make the contest a little more dynamic so what you're looking at here is the GNU radio transmission sync. So to the left side, you have the input and that's where the challenge signals are um, you know, fed into the server. And then um, the channel model is applied to simulate uh, real world conditions. And then below that, where we have the tag strobe, um, that's where the server delivers uh, to the contestant the sample rate of the signal, which of course will be very important when you uh, come to decode the signal. So this is where the signal and its metadata are combined. And then uh, you can see on the right side where the signal is put into the ZMQ. So then on the reception side, um, this is the piece that runs on the contestant's machine where uh, ZMQ is uh, connected to the server and then the data is streamed out. And then we have a little bit of uh, Python magic there uh, where tags to VARs. So the tagged metadata from the GNU radio stream is then automatically assigned to variables within the GNU radio environment. So in this case, uh, the server is able to transmit um, the uh, signal sample rate to the client. And then inside the client's environment, the sample rate is automatically dynamically updated. So the, the user can then uh, connect to, to the output here and then uh, begin to process the signal within GNU radio and then it's uh, fairly seamless at this point. So to support external tools, we have this additional <coughs> block which will um, do what I just described in terms of the reception side, but further it will take the signal and then output it to a generic Linux FIFO. Um, as well as, um, you know, display to the user the server connection, the sample rate, um, and the tuned uh, receive frequency. 
So the user uses this Rx to FIFO in order to make a connection to the server and stream data to the FIFO. And then they can further connect external tools to the FIFO, or they can copy data out of the FIFO, um, just however they find best integrates with their tools. So I'll hand it over to Marco, who's going to talk a little bit about the past contests we've run at various conferences. Thank you, Jonathan. That's super interesting. And uh, the question that you guys might have is how we went from this concept we had when we develop uh, our contest down to the grounds. I mean, how we engage with the contestant and run CTS um, physically at conference. So this is how we do it. I'm going to tell you in the following slide. So we start what we call with a radio village. So you can think of a radio village as something like uh, DEFCON style village, like a booth where you have people passing over and joining us during the event. They could like um, stop by at the village making questions or engaging with us or playing the contest. So uh, we started back in uh, 2018 with our first run and we did it as Jonathan said uh, correctly at the PAXEC Tokyo because uh, we had the previous experience uh, with Drigos on uh, mobile phone to one. And we use uh, PAXEC 2018 as a uh, testing ground to, to, uh, to establish uh, the future of CTS. On the same here, thanks to the connection I had with Dylan, who is the organizer of Hack in the Box, we ran a similar event down at Hack in the Box uh, Dubai, where we had a group of around 20 contestants joining us and playing uh, uh, our challenges. Um, we developed overall uh, five different challenges and the game was made in a way that when you solve first, you go to the second. When you go to solve the second, you go to the third. And uh, each uh, flag is basically a hint for the next challenge to be solved. So uh, 2018 went uh, pretty well. So both uh, the organizers of PAXEC and Hack in the Box were uh, quite excited of what we did. So they confirm our present for 2019 and they want us actually to expand. That's why we went uh, from two conference to four conference and we participate uh, to uh, CanSec West Vancouver as well, which runs pretty much similarly to PAXEC and we had a special format. And we also add Akimba Box Amsterdam, which is the European version of Akimba Box. And in 2019, we also try uh, for, we vacuum a box Amsterdam to go hybrid. So we had a few people on site that could play with us uh, either via SDR or via uh, what Jonathan described to you. And then we had a few other people that were played, that were welcome to play the remotely. And we had a way basically to have them connecting to our local infrastructure down at the radio village in Hacking a Box Amsterdam. And this went uh, pretty well and actually helped us a lot uh, to establish uh, the transition from uh, on-site event uh, to a virtual event. Uh, this one came by luck, even because uh, starting from 2020, we've been all affected by this uh, lockdown thing. Uh, but we were ready on our side. So we had already all the framework and all the knowledge to go virtual. And uh, we started in 2020 with hardware IO. Uh, which is like a, a naked security conference, uh, very much focused in, uh, in hardware security, where we ran our first uh, fully remote uh, edition of, uh, of Capture the Signal with contestants joining us from all over the world and uh, uh, interacting with us over the cloud. Uh, we are for the same year at Box, and this year we had as well Hardware IO uh, 2021 US, which we ran actually a few days ago. So this is about all the history uh, of, of the contest and uh, all the uh, seven edition of CTS we had so far. So here are a couple of photos of how the Radio Video Village looks like. So we have on the left side contestants that join us for playing. Uh, usually the contest run for the uh, whole duration of the conference. Uh, for example, at uh, Hacking the Box, uh, we have like day one and day two. Uh, and uh, on day one, it's basically eight hours of a contest, and day two is something like six hours. Uh, so you're welcome to play from the beginning, or you're also welcome like to, uh, to join us to make questions or uh, to get some of our stickers or uh, to just play a few challenges if you're not really uh, into, into radio hacking uh, yet. 
And uh, this is a lot of fun, but on the other side is as well a real comp. So we have actually <clears throat> team that are competing uh, and for, for prizes. Uh, for that, we use uh, a framework called CTFD, which is like uh, which is an open source framework used for running uh, capture the flag contest, uh, where you have basically all the management of the of the registration, as well as the management of the flag submission and of the of the scoring. Um, here you have, for example, like a graph showing you basically how the game developed over time with the teams that took over one each other like in a normal CTF. You've already played the sort of things. Here we have like some statistics given from, from the CTF, the um, scoreboard. So we have, for example, for uh, the last Arduino edition we ran a few days ago, more than 300 teams, uh, sorry, users registered and 200 teams, uh, which is pretty good. And then we have some statistics on which signals and be, have been solved the most, which one are more difficult to be um, to be solved. We also have like information on the flags that are submitted for, by the contestants, as well as incorrect flags, in a way that we can tune basically tune the regex for accepting or not the flag in real time. And of course, we have prizes. Uh, usually we have uh, an award ceremony that run uh, during the closing of conference when the conference run in person. While nowadays, uh, due to this virtual uh, format, we usually have a virtual award ceremony and we ship prizes uh, to, the, uh, to the winners as well as second and third place. And here, for example, we have an example, uh, an RTL SDR stick for bronze, which is a stick you can use to receive the uh, radio traffic like remotely. So you can bring with you. And uh, if you are close or whatever to a Zigbee transmitter, you can record traffic, for example. Uh, for second place, we have a yard stick, uh, which allow you to receive as well as to transmit. Um, so with that, you can potentially record and retransmit, for example, to take over uh, whatever, a garage door or anything of that sort. And uh, for the first prize, we have a fully fledged uh, SDR. Uh, here, for example, it's a photo of a Blade RF, but you could, uh, we add as well, like Hacker RF or uh, those sort of board that you can use to do uh, real world research on uh, radio protocol uh, security. And um, on top of uh, our principle of uh, being uh, connected with the community, we had as well the principle to be as open as possible. So we have uh, um, a Slack workspace that you can join to talk to us. Uh, we have uh, Twitter that you can use to, uh, to follow us. For example, here, there is an information about our next event being at Hardware Year 2021. And we have a website where uh, basically leave uh, everything we do. See, so it's uh, the home page is cts.ninja. Here you can uh, go and take a look at uh, the past editions with photo. Uh, you can uh, download the ISO of the VMs, uh, having uh, our uh, tool for connecting to our framework, uh, as well as a uh, tool for for running the contest on your side. And this is actually what uh, we are going to uh, to release with this arsenal. And uh, as you can see here, it's a lot of fun. So these are some of the comments we had from a contestant playing at, uh, at the last edition we had. Uh, we have people saying, hey man, I, I regret I was not able to sign in. We have other people say, do, you know, I wanted to sign in, but you know, I, I failed for that. Uh, other people that really enjoy what we were doing, other that had a lot of fun. Uh, so this is for us very um, inspiring, like because um, what we do here is uh, uh, is for fun, so it's it run it all run on a voluntary basis, and also the fact that we are releasing this framework to you guys because we have been asked by, for example, professors in universities or by a previous player to have a way to run uh, the same content we run at conference on their local site. Uh, so for us, very um, yeah, I mean, it's very it's a, it's, yeah, it's something that I really like, you know, to run something, to, to, to make something helpful for the community and to have people that want to run uh, the challenge on their side as well as, as we do. Uh, so this is a photo taken from Jonathan, I think, at the CANSEC uh, 2019, 
uh, about our uh, Radio Village with uh, information on how to join our select channel as well as the prizes uh, we had to give out to uh, winners. And uh, to conclude, I want to say that this is also a, a learning experience, both for us, uh, that we create challenges for uh, um, experienced radio acres as well. So we learn from feedbacks we received from the community, as well as from a contestant that can uh, stop by the booth, as you can see here, Jonathan giving uh, instruction or giving uh, a write-up on how uh, the challenge uh, should have been uh, solved. Um, so this is all on my side. I'm now passing uh, the presentation to Fed. He will tell you how we transition from a radio village that we run at conference, as I show you, to a more global contest with people joining us from all over the world. Thank you. Exactly, Marco. And this is exactly what we want to do with this presentation. We really want to involve the community hopefully get them excited and join the effort of running these competitions on your side. Um, of course, we had to solve a few problems. Um, uh, what Jonathan introduced to you was uh, how we solved the streaming signals over IP. But now we go from 10 to 20 contestants on a local, uh, local network with essentially unlimited bandwidth to uh, a remote competition. So I want to dig deeper a little bit and show you what uh, what we did. So um, how do you go from uh, having GNU radio flow graphs to headless, completely headless Python scripts? This is something very important because unless you want to burn memory on a virtual frame buffer, you want to be able to run all the, the challenges, which are essentially um, GNU radio flowchart on a remote server in a manageable way. So what we've been doing is we spend some time to do some what, what we can call DevOps essentially on making the competition scalable. Um, the second requirement that we want to, we needed to, to have and that we want to put on future challenges is that uh, all the GNU radio uh, flow graphs should be as parametric as possible. Pretty much like when you deploy a web application, when you dockerize a web application, you want to make it uh, as uh, environment dependent as much as possible because you want to be able to control it from the outside without modifying the source code. And possibly use a configuration file optionally and then have an unattended way to recompile a challenge so that if something happens and it did happen, of course, during a competition, you don't have the time nor the, the mental, the mental uh, power, so to say, because you're overwhelmed, you don't have the time to uh, download the challenge on your laptop, change it, recompile it, check that everything is working, and then re-upload it on the server. You want everything to be as um, simple as possible from a, a system administration point of view. This is the um, overall um, structure, architecture of the, of the backend that Jonathan has showed you. I would like to uh, highlight two parts uh, to begin with. The first is what the framework does which is the, the part in, um, in green. So we take care of providing you challenge developers with uh, all the metadata transmission infrastructure, all the radio frequency over IP transition and everything. You don't have to take care of the boring part. All you have to take care is make sure that you create a flowchart that can work in a self-contained way uh, and then adapt it a little bit to meet our, our environment. And I'll show you with a few practical examples what I mean. So inside uh, each challenge, um, we're going to see um, the bare minimum is these files. So um, you can have as many uh, resource files, so to speak, as you need. So you can have, for example, uh, PNGs or WAV files, if, you, if your challenge needs them, you can embed anything you want. Um, I'll, I'll come back to the make file a little later. If you will need, Jonathan mentioned some Python magic that we needed to, to do the uh, tech to vars uh, transition, you can add as many Python modules as you want, as you would do when you develop for with GNU Radio. So it's not different if you're a GNU Radio developer, it's not a different experience. Um, we provide a structure, a skeleton main.sh, which is the entry point that uh, makes sure makes sure of uh, running the, the the actual challenge, and then you can put 
similarly to Python, you can put as many GRC files as you need, hierarchy blocks uh, or any other block that you need. The uh, Your focus normally is to make everything self-contained into this signal.grc. It's a standard name, but we made the entry point parametric. So for whatever reason you want to change the name of these files, you can do that without changing anything else inside. Um, this is the GRC, the actual flowchart, and this is the CFG file. It's a text file with some configuration inside. Actually, let me now show you the main entry point to give you an idea of how it challenge, uh, uh, it's bootstrapped. Um, you set up some environment variables. This is due to how uh, PyBombs works. If you're familiar with GNU Radio, you know exactly that PyBombs is uh, the best way to uh, install GNU Radio in a maintainable way. Um, and then anything else you need to do, really, you can customize this as you need. Uh, for example, we had to patch um, um, to, pat to patch the master branch of GNU Radio if you want to use uh, 3.7 or any other versions. There might be some patching needed. Then you can install any dependencies. Here we needed uh, GNU Radio Paint um, blocks. And then you can rebuild the GRC files and finally launch the framework, sorry, launch the flow graph in, in foreground. Right, the make file uh, does two main things, which is cleaning up uh, from previous uh, Python file if needed and compiling. I honestly, before starting working on this, I wasn't aware there was a command line compiler, which makes everything easier. So this is the GNU radio compiler that you can simply run against uh, a GRC and it will make sure that everything is compiled uh, into a Python file, of course, unless there are any errors. So you can really do anything, everything headless. This is exactly what we, we were needing, we were looking for. Good, uh, here's the configuration file, which is a simple textual file. There is a framework part, which normally you shouldn't touch unless you want to change the bandwidth uh, allocation. This is how uh, the spectrum is managed essentially and mapped into ports like Jonathan was saying. So we see a base port of 10,000, a uh, up to 30,000, and then we have the bandwidth per port and so on, some other parameters. So normally you don't need to change this. Um, the signal itself, your signal, is going to be based on this configuration um, variable. So if you need to turn on and off some, some, some options or if you need to pass some parameters, you can do it here without having to change the uh, GRC. So for instance, if you want to transmit onto a different frequency, you can change the frequency here. Or maybe in another challenge, in another, for example, this is the hack in the box version of our welcome challenge, which we have in every CTS to make you know people get familiar with the infrastructure. And we change the message at every uh, competition to give the second frequency to turn, to tune in to get the second challenge, right? So you can customize this message um, for any competition and uh, you don't need to recompile sorry you don't need to change the grc file you just need to change in here and if you want if you find a way to make this dependent from an environment variable then you don't even need to alter the configuration file you can just reuse the same great um so how do you start creating a new challenge uh from this template well I suggest that you copy a signal that is known to work and we're going to release a full example of a working signal uh, that you can derive from. Um, change the, do whatever changes you need to do in the GRC using, for example, GNU Radio Compa Companion or any other editor that you like. Then you test that your signal is working in Ra GNU Radio and uh, disable or remove any graphical element because that's not going to work, probably not even compile in a headless environment. And then you finally glue it up, to, glue it up together with uh, Docker Compose. That's what we do. We have one entry, so called service for each signal. Uh, we give it as much memory as we need to. Uh, we give it a name. Uh, we give it an image. The image is uh, open source, both the builder, sorry, the, the Docker files, as well as the actual image itself. So you could actually start running a competition now. Uh, network mode host, of course, this is needed because we want to be able to uh, ignore any port mapping 
but if you want, you can also do custom port mapping here. But since everything has to be dynamic, you don't want to do this manually. You want to let the framework calculate the ports by itself. And here we mount the volume because we reuse the same Docker image over and over for simplicity. OK, and then, well, you launch. You uh, turn up uh, turn up all the Docker Compose uh, services and you check that everything is fine. And if you want, you can also turn up and down an individual signal. Great, so now on the client side, we have to take care of the opposite. So we offer the clients uh, and it's already, this is already open source before this, um, this release, the client tools. So essentially every, every contestant uses a command line tool to tune to our server at a certain frequency. The, the tool will do the math, uh, the port to RF uh, frequency calculation and connect to the right port and stream the IQ samples onto a FIFO from which you can consume using your favorite tools. So you can use uh, GQRX, uh, you can use uh, Osmocom, whatever you want, even GNU Radio. Um, here is how to, uh, as a client, as a contestant, how to start uh, receiving. I can show you a quick example now. So I'll go quick here. Um, at every competition, the organizers will give out the server IP and, uh, well, at least one entry point frequency to know where to tune at. Um, and when you start consuming samples, this is the FIFO that um, this command execution has created. When you start consuming at least one sample, this will actually trigger the propagation of the tags that contain information about the sample rate because we have to know, we have we need a way to tell the contestant what sample rate this, the, the original signal has been generated with. Otherwise, there will be um, uh, under or over sampling issues. Great, see, now you can use, for example, GQRX. Instead of telling to use an SDR, you tell them to use uh, uh, FIFO, or if you want, you can use Osmocom FFT or any other tools. Uh, if you want to make it slightly harder to cheat, although cheaters will still cheat and ruin the competitions, um, you can have a port filler, which could be a simple port filler or something more complex like streaming uh, real and meaningful signals, simply that are not part of the challenge uh, on every port. Make sure that you make them all different to minimize the um, information that you, you're giving out to the contestants. You can find uh, all the all the tools uh, that you need in at this address, um, github.com slash capture the signal, and you will find a few repositories. And uh, what we're releasing today is the backend tools and template for running uh, challenges. So now I'm going to show you a very quick demo on what's needed to run a simple signal. All right, so what we have here is a simple uh, entry point signal. We call it painter because it paints the spectrum. We have this as a welcome challenge uh, in every of uh, our contests. This is the familiar structure that uh, I showed you earlier. So you can run it in Docker, but of course you can also run it uh, in um, locally, natively. So I'm going to make all to show you that uh, now we have the Python file ready so we can just launch it there we go it'll do some calculation and uh, it will be starting streaming soon okay now we can go on the client side so we have the rx to fifo python that we can use uh, to receive for example let's see what signal what frequency this signal uh, was broadcasting. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is uh, 445. This is the frequency that uh, uh, you're going to communicate to your contestants. So let's start it once again. Okay, and then you tell the contestants to tune at a certain server. And of course the frequency, we paste it over here. Okay, so now it's connected. And uh, if we start consuming samples, uh, for example, into a file, right, from the cts.fifo, and we go back to the client, uh, we see that we are dealing with a signal at 128. So now if we want, uh, we could 
take a look at how the signal work looks like. We could use your H open TMP full IQ. We check the spectrum. And here's the familiar, it's just mirrored, right? So our wish list for um, for the future is that uh, contestants uh, will have more challenges to solve, which is a lot of work on our side. So we are hoping to get some help from the community to engage with the community. So we really encourage you to run small contests at the university or at your labs, just to you know, even as a way to teach others. Uh, clone the repo, give back with PRs and challenges if you want and uh, hopefully join us at uh, other conferences. And please, all the contestants that have been already writing great write-ups continue to do so, and we'll be happy to reshare them via Twitter. Thank you very much, and if you have any questions, we're here.